worship flow to him in this moment. Take another 30 seconds and just let it flow. Thank you, Lord. We honor you today. We magnify your name today. You are awesome. You are magnificent. You are great. You are the beginning and the end. You are. It is you. It is you, O oh Lord. You are the good shepherd. You are our rock. It is you. You are the bishop of our souls. We love you today. We honor you today. You are our great intercessor. You are, Lord. It is because of you we're here today. And so we give you the highest praise. If you can give them a shout of hallelujah. If you can shout hallelujah, I can't hear you. Can you shout hallelujah? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'm just going to take a few minutes and allow the Holy Spirit to do what he wants to do. Thank you. honor the presence of the Holy Spirit today. I thank you, Agape. What a mighty time of worship. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Well, we come this morning, for this is Pentecost Sunday. Fifty days ago, we were celebrating and remembering the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Today we come to remember and to give honor to the Holy Spirit who it was evident that Jesus kept his promise and that the gift to the church is the person of the Holy Spirit. And 50 days after the resurrection is when the church began. So this is the birthday of the church. This is the birthday of the church. This is the day on Pentecost Sunday when the church was given its mission and empowered to do the mission. And that is to spread the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ and the kingdom of God. So follow me into the word of God as it is recorded there in Acts chapter 2, what happened on the day of Pentecost. Acts chapter 2, and I am just going to read verses 1 through 4. Acts 2, verses 1 through 4. The Word of God says to us today that on the day of Pentecost, all the believers were meeting together in one place. Suddenly, 
there was a sound from heaven like the roaring of a mighty windstorm and it filled the house where they were sitting then what looked like flames or tones of fire appeared and settled on each of them and everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them this ability. I want to talk to you today. I could title this so many different things, but I landed on you're empowered. You are empowered. Father God, in the name of Jesus, you are our God and we are your children. We come now, Father God, just to be at your feet. We open up our hearts and our minds that we might receive your word today. And so speak now because we are listening. We thank you for the privilege of being able to gather together once again. We don't take this for granted that we are in church we thank you and so we commit our ears to hear our spirits to connect with your spirit for we make the declaration today that we will not only be hearers of your word but we will be doers speak now holy spirit for we are listening amen amen you may be seated thank you for honoring the word of god the day of Pentecost. Now, as I was um, preparing and studying for this message, I have to tell you that many times as I listen to what is happening to people, that I try to put myself in their position. And of course, many a times, unless you're right there, you may not get the full magnitude of what happened. Uh, but here, I just wondered how they must have been thinking. It has been, like for them, uh, 53 days where they just saw miracles, where they just saw God move in a miraculous way. Think about it. They saw the crucifixion of Jesus. Uh, they witnessed the evidence of Jesus' victory over death on, on that Sunday morning, Resurrection Sunday. Uh, they witnessed Jesus walking the earth for another 40 days. And then they witnessed the ascension of Jesus into heaven. Can you imagine being them and witnessing all of that? Can it, it leads you to say, how can anyone in that day believe, not believe there is a God? How do you not believe? I, I wonder if even today that God shakes his head sometimes and just says, why won't they believe? Why won't they believe? There's so much evidence of God around us. And still yet in that day, there were people who still would not believe. I, I wonder, I think in our human terms, we would maybe be saying, what more do I have to do for you to believe? How, how, how can I turn your world around? That's why I get when the word of God shares with us that even nature testifies that there is a God. You don't have to live. If it's not happening in your life, the word of God says nature testifies that there is a God. And so I understand why God's response is only a fool says there is no God. Only a fool. There's too much evidence. And there they were living through the evidence of the crucifixion, the resurrection, the ascension, and now they are in a place together, getting ready to experience the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Well, the Holy Spirit is a fulfillment of a promise that Jesus made to the disciples. It is recorded in John chapter 14, verse, beginning at verse 15. 
Jesus says, if you love me, obey my commandments and I will ask the father and he will give you another advocate who will never leave you. He is the Holy Spirit who leads into all truth. The world cannot receive him because it isn't looking for him and doesn't recognize him. But you know him because he lives with you now and will later be in you. You get that? The world cannot receive him because they're not looking for him and they don't recognize him. Have you grown in your walk with Christ that you can now recognize the move of the Holy Spirit? But Jesus says he's an advocate. Some will describe him as a comforter. Another may say a counselor. The Greeks say he's a paraclete. But in general terms, he's a helper. In the legal term, he is an advocate. He is the defense. Uh, he is the counsel for the defense. I don't know about you, if you ever had any times in life when you felt like everybody walked out on you. But here's what we know, we still had an advocate. I don't know if you've ever been through a time and people were talking about you and they misunderstood you and you was wondering, is there anybody, anybody out there? I have to tell you today, you've had an advocate. I, I want you to know that when you are going through some things and maybe you messed up, you took a misstep. And the enemy is ready to accuse you because he is the accuser. But I have to tell you today that even if you messed up, the Holy Spirit shows up as your advocate. He is your advocate. He'll show up for you. I don't know if you've ever been in a pit and you know that it was because of the choices that you made. I want you to know don't carry around the guilt. Don't carry around the shame because you got an advocate. In John 16, verses 7 and 8, hear the words of Jesus. But in fact, it is best for you that I go away because if I don't, the advocate won't come. Now, I have read that scripture for years, years and years. I always pause when I hear Jesus saying, it is best for you that I go away. Because I, 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 I've read the gospels. I know what Jesus was doing. Jesus was healing the sick. He was casting out demons. He was showing compassion for the poor, for the least of these. He was straightening out people's theology. Uh, he, he was giving us an example, a, a real live physical example of God the Father. And he says, but it's better for you that I go. Is, was it really better, Jesus, that you were not there with them? You're healing. You're, you're calling demons out by name. They're running scared of you. Is it really best that you left? And then I would ask the question, is it really best for us that we don't have Jesus in the physical form? Is that really best for us? Well, I would just have to go to the next verse or the ending of that statement, it is best for you that I go away. And Jesus explains why. He says, because if I don't, the advocate won't come. Jesus knew that in his physical form, there were limitations that he imposed upon himself. Jesus could not be everywhere at the same time in the physical form when he put his spirit within a human body. 
Jesus understood that. That's why he could say, greater works will you do. Because he said that the advocate would come and he promises them, okay, I know that you've seen what he can do because when Jesus came, he says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. So the, he knew that they understood that they could see the spirit upon people, but they were getting ready to experience something that never happened before, that the spirit would be in them 20 Four, seven. So you have an advocate 24 7. You know, I always pause here to think about the Spirit of the Lord is in us. Can I say it again? He who was present when the earth was formed. Can I say it? He who is creator of the heavens and the earth. Can I say it? He who raised Jesus by his power off of the cross. He that was able to part the Red Sea. He is on the inside of me. I, I, I don't know what that does for you. It does something for me to know that the spirit of the Lord, the spirit of the Lord that enabled Jesus to heal the sick, the spirit of the Lord that could cast out demons, the spirit of the Lord was upon, it's in us, in us 24 seven. That's why I want you to leave with some confidence today that no matter what you're going through, you'll make it through. I want to leave you with some confidence. I want you to be confident today. I don't want anybody leaving here that will not be confident that whatever you're going through, whatever you have to overcome, whatever it is, that the spirit of the Lord is in you. The spirit of the Lord is in you. The spirit of the Lord is in you. And so you can do what he promises you can do. That was the promise of Jesus, that the spirit of the Lord would be in you. And boy, do we need the Holy Spirit. That's why he's our helper. In order for us to live out this Christian life, we need the Spirit of the Lord. We need the Holy Spirit. In order for us to go through the transformation process that we might one day change the way we look and look like look and live in the image of Jesus Christ, that we would have his character, we need help. Why do we need help? One. Because in order to love like Jesus loved, you need some help. In order to love the unlovable, in order to get down on your knees and pray for your enemies, in order for you to forgive someone of some past hurts and some past pain, in order for you to do that, you need the help of the Holy Spirit. In order to fulfill God's destiny for you, you need the help of the Holy Spirit. In order for you to get up when you're feeling your weakest, you need the person and the presence of the Holy Spirit. In order for you to be able to say the words and mean them, not my will, but thou will be done, you need the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit. Because let's be honest, many times we just don't feel like it. Many of you needed some help getting here to church because you woke up and you probably said, I'm not going today. And then the next thing you knew, you were up and getting dressed and you said, I thought I said I wasn't going to church today. I want to tell you it's the presence of the Holy Spirit in your life. Some of you are praising God today. You're worshiping God today. And you're going through hell at home. But it's the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit that for whatever you're going through, you can still shout hallelujah. For whatever you're going through, you can still say God is good. For whatever you're going through, you can still put a smile on your face. It is because the spirit of the Lord is in you. He also gives us revelation. 
The word of God says, apart from the Holy Spirit, we cannot know spiritual things. Apart from the Holy Spirit, we cannot know spiritual things. For no one comprehends the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. Now, I know we pray sometimes, Lord, just tell me. Lord, show me. But the Word of God says, apart from the Holy Spirit, we can't even comprehend the thoughts of God. So if we want to know what God is thinking, you have to have your spirit in tune with the spirit in order to receive revelation. Revelation just doesn't come uh, just to anyone. The word of God says it's those who are in the spirit, connected to the spirit, connected to the Holy Spirit that receive revelation, that you get to know the thoughts of God. How awesome that is. You get to know the thoughts of God. When he's ready to reveal something to you, he'll tell you. We get revelation knowledge from the Holy Spirit. We get wisdom from the Holy Spirit. I know I preached a whole sermon last week on wisdom, but we get that divine wisdom from the Holy Spirit. Some of us have made some decisions in life that turned out really well. And you say to yourself, I know it wasn't me. I wasn't even smart enough to logically put all that together and make the right decision. I was just going with the Spirit. I felt the Spirit leading me. I felt the, felt the Spirit guiding me. I felt like I heard a word that says, go left, don't go right. Right looks really right right now, but don't go right. I need you to go left. And you said, okay, right looks right, but I can't go right. I got to go left. And you went left, and God had a blessing for you on the left side. The wisdom of the Holy Spirit. And then it gives us the Holy Spirit that the fruit of the Spirit would be manifested through us. And so we get that love, that joy, that peace, that faithfulness, that goodness, uh, that kindness. We get all of that, that patience, that self-control. We get that from the Holy Spirit. But he also gives us power over our sinful nature. He gives us power to choose him and not to fall and choose what our flesh, the fleshly appetites that we have. He gives us power. So when we look at verse 4, it says, everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them this ability. I want to say to you that the Holy Spirit living on the inside of us that we should live life with some evidence of the Holy Spirit. That's why for people who, I want to say this, I don't want to confuse you, but there are people that come to God, that give their life to God, that confess that Jesus Christ is their Lord and Savior. But you see them caught up in the same sin that they were caught up in 10 years ago. You see them still shacking up with the same person they were shacking up five years ago. I gotta tell you that something is off there. I, I know what you say. I know I see you in church. I, I, I know what you say, but I, I, I'm, I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. No, there has to be some evidence of the Holy Spirit on the inside. Now, now I, I'm not saying that there are, are, are some of us that get to that place of perfection where we don't mess up, where we don't fall sometimes. No, I, I'm not saying that, but I'm saying in your heart, in your heart, there has to be, because when the Holy Spirit shows up, he takes out our heart and puts in a new heart. We're, we're a, a new creation. We're not that old creation. 
And, and so therefore there needs to be some evidence because when the Holy Spirit shows up in the Bible, there's some evidence of him showing up. There has to be some evidence of him inside of you. You have to change something, change the way you talk. You don't cuss like a sailor anymore. No, you gotta, you have to change some things because the Holy Spirit's on the inside of you. You don't still go to those same places. You don't even have the desire to go to the places. Why? Because it's the evidence of the Holy Spirit on that. Someone calls you up, hey, we're going out to the club tonight. You coming? Something inside of you convicts you and say, there's nothing there for you. Stay home, stay home. You even surprise yourself. No, I'm not going, hang up. No, because it's the evidence of the Holy Spirit inside of you. You know that if somebody came up to you and they started, you know, wah, 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 they started talking mess to you, you would be ready to, you know, use your tongue and slash them. Now you just keep quiet and you smile. It's the evidence of the Holy Spirit on the inside of you. There should be some evidence. This is where we get where people will say to you that um, uh, the evidence of, of speaking in tongues is evident of the Holy Spirit only because right here it says the evidence of the Holy Spirit at this time was that they began speaking in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them the ability. I, I, I just want to tell someone today um, that you know, someone is telling you, you can't do something. Someone is telling you, you can't. Someone is telling you that you are crazy for believing in the dream that you have. Someone is trying to say to you, you're not smart enough. Someone is saying to you, but you didn't go to Harvard. You didn't even go to college. You barely finished high school. Someone is saying that to you. Someone is saying to you, you don't even know how to speak. You stutter. Someone is saying you failed English. Someone is saying you don't get your uh, apostrophes and commas and periods and the right place. How do you think God will take you to that level? I want to tell you that if God has it for you, it's for you. And if God says it is yours, it is yours. And how will you do it? Because the Holy Spirit will give you ability. He gave them the ability to speak in other languages so that everyone there was not confused, but they understood what the Holy Spirit was saying. Peter could stand up and speak to a crowd that could have had 70 nations in front of him, but he could get up and he could speak the word of God and they all could understand because it's the Holy Spirit. So I say to you this morning that you are more powerful, more gifted, and have more ability than you probably even realize. You have the Holy Spirit on the inside of you. So verse 2, I went to 4, now I'm going back to 2. On the day of Pentecost, all the believers were meeting together in one place. It was another moment that I wanted to just try and, and imagine what it felt like. They are all together, all believers meeting together in one place. This is where I'll do my plug for the church again. I believe in a local church. I believe in the gathering of believers. I understand the convenience in being comfortable in your own home and, you know, turning on the TV, you know, not rushing to get dressed. Understand you get your cup of coffee, um, you know, you sit back, you cross your legs. I understand that is comfortable, that feels good, and you feel like I'm in uh, your element, you're in your element. But can I tell you, there is nothing like gathering with believers. There is nothing like being in a room where everybody is thinking about Jesus. 
There is nothing like all of us coming together and we're, we're shouting because you know what God did for you last week. You know what he did for you. Now, he may not have done the same thing, but you just know God showed up for you. And so when you get your praise on, when I get my praise on, when we start worshiping together, we all have one thing in common. We know we're here because God allowed us to be here. We know we're here because God brought us through some things. We're here because God kept his promise. He he showed up every day in our lives. He said, I won't leave you. I won't forsake you. We're here because of God. We're here for God. And so when we come together, there's something like an energy in the room. There's something electrifying that happens in the place where saints are gathered together. Something happens on the inside. You may have come in with your head down, but I promise you, you'll go out with your head up because something happens when we all are in one place together. Jesus is the topic of conversation where two or three are gathered in my name. I am in the midst. Something happens when we're all together. The word of God says that they were together in one place. And then it goes on to say, Suddenly, suddenly, I don't know what suddenly means to you, but the word of God says suddenly there was a sound from heaven, suddenly, I'm telling you right now, your breakthrough is going to come through suddenly, but let me be clear, suddenly does not mean you don't have to wait. It just means that when God shows up, God's going to show up suddenly. So they were up in, uh, they were meeting in one place and then suddenly there was a sound from heaven. I can recall other places in the Bible where things happened suddenly. Suddenly on the road to Damascus, there was a light that shone on uh, Saul at the time. And that light shone from heaven. That was a suddenly, he's walking along, then suddenly a light shines and he hears a voice suddenly. I also recall in a couple chapters ahead in Acts 16 that suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken and immediately all the doors were open. Immediately, suddenly, all the doors were open. I'm telling you, your chains will fall loose suddenly. I'm telling you, miracles happen suddenly. I, I'm saying suddenly, but how, I'm going to try and give you an illustration of what I mean by suddenly, because when I, when I think when we hear suddenly, again, we're not thinking like, I got to wait for this to happen. No, they were waiting. They were in a room waiting. And so the illustration I want to give to you today is when your lights go out. I know a couple weeks ago, Decula, parts of Decula experienced light, their lights went out. And so their lights went out, I think it was like 11 o'clock at night, didn't come back on for almost 12 hours later. And so I got some texts that morning, Pastor, I'm not going to be at church today because I can't see and, um, you know, I just can't make it today. I had some other people uh, actually show up and I looked at them and I said they must have laid their clothes out last night because they don't have any wrinkles, nothing. Um, and they were still dressed, ready to come to church. So those are the ones, I don't know about you, I still haven't gotten there where I can lay my clothes out at night. But some of you, there's evidence that you put your clothes out at night. But when I think about the lights going out, I think about it um, in, in, in relation to the suddenly. Now, if you paid your bill and your lights go out, you're expecting that the electric company is going to do what it takes to get the lights back on. But I've been in those moments. In those moments, you have no idea when it's going to happen. 
They may give you an estimate. Your lights are going to come back on in two hours. We're, you know, fixing something. A pole went down. An accident happened. Uh, and so they give you an estimated time. But you still don't know the exact time. And, and so you're just waiting. But you know you've paid your bill. And you just, if they call you up and tell you the lights are never coming back on again, oh, you need evidence of the Holy Spirit. But you wait because you're in expectation. So eventually the lights do come back on. But when they come back on, it's a sudden moment. Don't you, you, you jump, right? You're like, the lights are on. It's a suddenly. So that's the suddenly that I'm talking about today. The suddenly that requires a waiting period and then boom, bam, there it is. So it is, this is how it happened when we think of them in the upper room. Suddenly, they heard from heaven. There was a sound from heaven. I want to say to you this morning that when you are tuned in to the Spirit, you get to hear some sounds from heaven. We have to tune our ears to hear the sound of heaven. Suddenly there was a sound. Now maybe you'll understand this better if I put it in this, if I use this illustration. When you want some laughs on your way to work or some jokes, or you want to hear some prank calls, you tune in to 107.5. If you want to hear some urban music, you may turn into tune into 103.3. But now if you want to go to work and you want to hear some praise, you tune into 102.5. So you determine who and what you're going to tune into. So it is. You must have a desire. You must tune in to hear the sound of heaven, and we hear the sound of heaven through our daily prayer, through our study of the word, through fellowship, through seeking him, through expectation. They were waiting for something to happen in that room. So for them, the sound of heaven was a mighty windstorm. And you hear the sound of the wind. And when you hear the sound of the wind, many of us are in expectation of something to happen. The sound of a wind, of the wind, many times says to us, a storm is coming. We better get ready. So the sound of the wind puts you in a position. It puts your mind in a place. And so he gets their attention by them hearing a sound. Now they can't really, they, the only way they know how to explain the sound, because it says the sound was like a windstorm. They just knew something different was happening. They just knew the atmosphere was changing. I want you to know that when you hear a sound from heaven, it's a, instinctively, it's, a, it's in your spirit that you know your atmosphere is changing. I want to know if there's anybody here this morning that you feel like God is up to something. Uh, and maybe you've got a sound from heaven where you know your atmosphere is starting to change. God is up to something. God is going to do something. I need to know, am I with the people that know that God is going to show up for you? I, I want you to know, are you expecting something miraculous to happen? I, I want to know, are you expecting a breakthrough to happen? What are you waiting for? Are you waiting on God? Are
are you expecting that you will have that suddenly moment and you know God is going to show up? Is there anyone here that believes God will show up and God will be right on time? He's going to be right on time. And to help you get through every day waiting on him, he sends us an advocate. He sends us someone who will strengthen us as we wait. He sends us the Holy Spirit. I know in Revelation 14 and 2, um, one of my favorite scriptures, well, it talks about the sound of heaven like the roar of a mighty ocean. The word of God says there'll be a sound from heaven on the day that Jesus comes back and the rapture happens, that there will be the sound of a trumpet. There are sounds coming from heaven and we have to tune ourselves into the sounds of heaven because the sounds of heaven bring a calmness in our life. The sounds of heaven keep us in this expectation, this, uh, this position of expectation. The sound of heaven tells us it's okay. The sounds of heaven says, I'm, I'm, I'm with you, I got you. The sounds of heaven announce the beauty, the awesomeness, the, mag the majestic uh, uh, of God. It's the sound of heaven that talks about, that reminds you just how awesome he is, how great he is. It's the sound of heaven will put you in a position of praise. Revelation 4, this is where my favorite, one of my favorites is. They said they stand around the throne and they say, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God almighty. It's a sound from heaven. Oh, we're praising God. Holy, 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 the Lord God almighty. The one who always was, who is, and who is still to come. I close here by reminding you, you have an advocate. I want to leave everyone leaving here today. If you came in and you had some things on your heart, if you came in feeling and thinking about whatever the sickness is, I know I got some calls. I know there's some people that got some a diagnosis of cancer. I know it, but I believe God. God will show up. I believe God. God will not abandon you. And the advocate is there to remind you of just who you are in Christ. He reminds us that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. He reminds us that if God be for you, who can be against you? Remember, if God is for you, I need to see the people of God today that believes that God is for you. If God is for you, shake off the worry. And if God is for you, don't become hopeless. If you know God is for you, the Holy Spirit is going to bring you into remembrance of the word of God. For God says, I am for you. And who can be against you? Who can separate you from the love of God? What can separate you from the love of God? of God. You have everything you need in the person of the Holy Spirit that you walk through what you walking through victoriously. Now I need you to shout and give him the highest praise. I need you to shout hallelujah. I need you to shout glory to the Lamb. I need you to shout, holy, 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 the Lord God almighty. I need you to shout right now for your victory. I need you, I, I, I don't know, I don't know, maybe it, it may not have come yet, 
but I need you to act like right now that your victory has come. I need you to act, I need you to express right now, I know my victory. I know, I know my victory is coming. I know it, and it'll happen suddenly, suddenly. I believe that you are living a life that has more power than your mind can imagine. You just need to believe him. Just believe him. Just believe him. The outpouring of the Holy Spirit is for you and me. Over 2,000 years later, he is still pouring out his spirit to those who come and say, I confess Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Do you believe? today. I want to talk to those of you who are streaming with us right now, because right now, wherever you are, you can, in this moment, accept the invitation from Jesus. He invites you to come a part of his family. He invites you to connect spirit to spirit with the Holy Spirit. There's a whole lot of spirits in this world, but there is only one Holy Spirit. And so connect with him today he, he said he would leave 99 to go after one and I want you to know that if you have not accepted him as your Lord and Savior the invitation is being extended to you because upon your acceptance of him the Holy Spirit comes in you and so though even at that day of Pentecost, there was a corporate outpouring, but there was also an individual pour outpouring. And so it's for you today. If you're hopeless today, I have hope for you. If you're feeling unloved today, I know God will love you unconditionally. I don't know what it is you might have need of, but I know we all need God. We all need God. And so you make a decision today to give your life to Jesus. The invitation also says if you need prayer, you can come up. Minister John Anna will pray with you. Whatever your need is, I know God is your answer. He is your answer. The word of God says in Romans 10 and 9, 
that if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord, and if you believe that God raised him from the dead, the word of God says you will be saved suddenly. You will be saved and spirit-filled suddenly. So if there's someone here today, if you're here today, and my life needs a change. I can't keep doing the same thing the same way 